This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. shocking murder of Agnes Tirop 10 days ago continues to make headlines around the world and as rising female distance runner was laid to rest in western Kenya, many hope her death will prove to be the turning point in a country rocked by gender-based violence and mental health issues amongst its female athletes. Tonight's sports scene highlights this and other top stories from around Africa. Hello and welcome to your home of African sports news, views and interviews. This is Sports Scene here on CGTN. I'm Mahia Mutua in Nairobi. Also coming up... Budding martial artists converge at the Dar es Salaam Taekwondo Open to compete for na talent recognition. And annual wrestling Rams tournament takes Algeria by storm in a bleating fight for glory. Welcome to the program. Now slain long-distance Olympic runner Agnes Tirop, a rising star in Kenya's highly competitive athletic scene, has been buried at an emotional funeral attended by over 1,000 mourners. Tirop was found stabbed to death in her home in the Rift Valley town of Iten on the 13th of October in an incident that has shone the spotlight on violence against women here in Kenya. Her funeral was held on the day she would have turned 26, Mourners, including fellow athletes, lined up to scatter flowers on a white coffin. A picture of Tirop smiling and holding up a bronze medal was also placed on top of the coffin. Police arrested Tirop's estranged husband, Ibrahim Ibra Rotic, in the coastal city of Mombasa last week, and he has been arraigned on suspicion of her murder. Mourners at the funeral held in western Kenya eulogized the fallen runner as a shining light gone too soon. This year, I was moving this year I was moving to road races, so while we were at the Tokyo Olympics, I was telling Agnes that now the onus was on her to take up the women's middle distance races mantle. I told her that in 2022 she was to go and defend my titles and represent our country while in the world championships because I'm the world champion. I told her that now I'm leaving. She was supposed to follow in my footsteps and other upcoming athletes were meant to follow in hers. Discipline, polite, athlete receiving instruction very well but something I don't know I don't know how I can say well the death of a top Kenyan athlete has brought to the fore the rising cases of domestic violence and femicide across Africa the United Nations has called her death the shadow pandemic Dina Awar a human rights activist says the COVID-19 pandemic has only worsened the situation the pandemic has strained um, so many people in terms of resources, yeah, economically. Uh, for example, in Kenya, we had the lockdowns, yeah? So many people could not do their businesses, yeah? So it meant that uh, most people that were doing small businesses had to stay at home. And uh, you also recognize that people lost their jobs. So you find that uh, a man and a woman who probably were seeing each other in the evening are spending so much time together with very little resources, but so many uh, problems to be sorted. Um, and so that sometimes brings friction, yeah? We must uh, look at the statistics as actual people, not numbers. And it is important that our leadership is uh, seen to carry this uh, issue with the seriousness that it deserves. While the murder of Olympian and world record holder Agnes Tirop has led to an outpouring of grief, anger, protests and calls to action to address the gender-based violence that has been visited upon female athletes in Kenya for years. As the slain Olympian and world record holder was laid to rest, CGTN's Astatal looks back at a murder that has shocked the nation and the world. On the morning of October 13th, the world woke to shocking news. The body of Agnes Tirop, a 25-year-old Kenyan female athlete, had been found in her home in Iten with stab wounds. 
The full horror of her murder soon became clear when her estranged husband, Ibrahim Rotic, was swiftly implicated by police as a main suspect to the killing. A day later, Rotic was arrested in Mombasa, some 800 kilometers away from the scene of the crime, as he attempted to flee to a neighboring country. The 41-year-old was subsequently charged with the murder and remanded in custody. The girl is so jovial. Um, in fact, we traveled with her to Nairobi. The day that uh, we were returning uh, back home from uh, Tokyo, and even on Monday at 4, I talked to her through the phone, and we were to meet at town, so it has happened. Agnes won the World Cross coming from the junior ranks and she had the career progression. She used to tell me she will run the marathon maybe in the future and I would tell her everything is possible because I had not run the marathon before and I did well. She would tell me I'm her mentor and if you win in marathons, there is hope for me. The killing of Tirop has shone a spotlight on violence against women in Kenya, which the government says has grown worse since the start of the global coronavirus pandemic. Ahead of her burial, leaders, fellow athletes, rights groups, organizations, and ordinary members of the public condemned the senseless killing, leading to a mass protest that attracted thousands in Eldoret. Many now hope Tirop did not die in vain and her passing will be a seminal event to address an issue that has affected many Kenyan female athletes for years. It's a bad moment to us, and uh, Agnes Tirov is our champion. I remember many things to Agnes Tirov. Uh, first of all, I remember him when he won a record in, uh, in Germany. I was the one who gave a flower after winning, uh, after breaking record. It was so sad to me. I remember Agnes and 2019, when we are in World Championship, because Agnes uh, got the bronze medalist in 10,000, and I got the bronze, uh, bronze medalist in marathon. So Agnes, uh, we, we, we share a light moment with Agnes and, uh, after the race, because 10,000 was about uh, same, almost the same day with the marathon, because uh, Agnes was in, uh, we are the same in management with Agnes, uh, Gianni de Madonna at the promotion, and we got the same uh, medal, Bronis in 10,000 and I got Bronis in marathon. So on that time we really say, wow, you get a Bronis and we are the same in family of athletics, so it was really, it's really painful. Tirop was tragically murdered only 10 days to her 26th birthday. She announced her talent to the world when she won the senior women's title at the Guiyang 2015 World Cross in China while she was still a teenager. Tirop then went on to win Kenya bronze medals at the London 2017 and Doha 2019 World Championships. Before her untimely death, she broke the world record in a 10-kilometer woman-only event with a time of 30 minutes and one second in Germany on the 12th of September. Her last performance was a second finish in the Giants Geneva race behind Kaki Dan Geza Enge in a time of 30 minutes and 20 seconds earlier this month. Astatal, CGTN. Well, as we've heard, heartbreaking scenes from Western Kenya as Agnes Tirop was laid to rest earlier today. For more on this story, we're now joined by CGTN Sadiq Shaban, who is live for us in Eldoret. Sadiq, what message do the charged scenes you witnessed earlier today send out to both Kenya and the world are following this untimely and tragic murder? Mahir, the message was very loud and clear today during the burial of Agnes Tirop. The athletes, F, the mourners, uh, officials who are there said, let this be the last time we are assembling in any gathering, in any congregation to mourn one of our own. In any case, we should be congregating and, 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 and coming together to celebrate victory uh, by the athletes. So uh, the, the message today was uh, very loud and clear. Uh, there were concerns uh, about uh, gender-based violence uh, that many speakers said uh, had been left uh, and spoken about for years and they say it's time now to come together and have that very difficult conversation not just in Kenya but around a different sporting uh, disciplines across the board.
And Sadiq, what can we expect then in coming days as far as resolving this shocking murder? Mahia, the investigators have assured the family and everybody that uh, no stone would be left unturned. They say the investigations are going on and the prime suspect is behind bars at this particular point. They have assured the family uh, that the wheels of justice will be hastened up, will be speeded up uh, so that just, uh, justice is served uh, to the fallen Olympian. Uh, there's also a conversation about this time about uh, uh, the late Agnes Tirop's uh, property, which is in dispute at this particular point. The family has appealed to lawyers and people of goodwill to help them uh, to secure that. And Athletics Kenya say in the coming days, uh, they want to bring the athletes together as they have done previously during anti-doping seminars. They want to bring them closer now and speak to them about issues of mental health and also just about uh, other issues, including investment and generally the athletes' well-being. And uh, finally, briefly, before we let you go, do you think that the death of Tirop is probably the seminal event that Kenya needs uh, in order to deal with a matter of gender-based violence and mental issues affecting mostly the country's female athletes? Uh, very sadly, uh, Mahia, the issue of Samuel Wanjiru was revisited during this event. Uh, remember Samuel Wanjiru, the first Kenyan marathon runner, uh, to win gold in marathon back in 2008 at the Beijing Olympic Games. That murder remains a mystery years later. And now the issue of Agnes Tirop. Uh, Gender-based violence remains such a contentious and a sensitive topic uh, in, in, in athletics. And athletics Kenya officials have told us that many athletes do not come forward to speak about this issue, making it very difficult to be, uh, for it to be addressed. But they are saying they are hopeful that they will make very crucial steps to also address the issue of depression, which has now been reported among Kenyan athletes, and mental health issues. Uh, many athletes sort of speaking about this and saying it was a very difficult year last year of the lockdown. There was no races, there was no income, and so they are feeling the strain of lost income. So an assurance has been given out that a conversation will be going on in the coming days addressing all these issues that uh, came to fore during the burial of Agnes Tirop. All right, Sadiq, thank you very much for speaking to us. CGT and Sadiq Shaban joining us live there from Eldoret. Well, it's time for us to take a short break. Here's what's coming up. Budding martial artists converge at the Dar es Salaam Taekwondo Open to compete for talent recognition. The greatest journeys. The greatest sights. The greatest adventures. Here in Panatar, this weir allows the locals to walk on water. We're far more than just TV news. We are your passport to the wonders of Africa. To bring you stories of struggle, survival and hope. Uh. Oh. So let's explore. CGTN. See the difference. Welcome back. Now, about 150 of Tanzania's best young fighters from 25 clubs across the country have taken part in the annual Dar es Salaam Open Taekwondo competition. Organizers of the one-day festival in the commercial capital used the event to spot future Olympic talent. CGTN's Isaac Lukando has more. The quality of kicks and punches is being judged at this taekwondo competition that brought together 150 youngsters from all over Tanzania. In this third edition of the competition, there's a particular emphasis on basic taekwondo moves rather than actual fights. Through it, organizers are hoping to slowly bring to life a national 5 to 10 year plan that will get Tanzanian fighters to the Olympics. There's a plan by the National Sports Council and the Taekwondo Federation to prepare several teams for the Olympics. There are teams for the disabled, there's a women's team, a men's team and a team for the under-18s. We are the ones preparing the under-18s. 
For most contestants, taking part in the competition is simply a fun day out with the possibility of getting medals at the end of the day. But for some older and more promising contestants, taking part has more serious implications. My goal in taking part in this competition is to realize the goals I have set for myself, to reach as far as the Olympics, to be able to compete out there and bring back a victory to Tanzania and get a gold medal. Over the years, Tanzania has sent representatives to the Olympics in both athletics and swimming, but is yet to be represented in Taekwondo. The country's Taekwondo Federation says it is now eyeing participation in the Paris 2024 and Los Angeles 2028 Olympics. Taekwondo competes with more popular sports like football for attention in Tanzania, with many viewing it as a pastime for kids. The Tanzania Taekwondo Federation believes raising the status of the sport in the country hinges on being able to make it to the Olympics. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected the sport with its traditional Korean backers scaling back more than 90% of the funding this year. Organizers of this competition say they are feeling the effects. These kids are very talented. They just don't have the opportunities. I would love to hold these competitions three or four times a year, but because of budgetary constraints, we aren't able to hold the competitions as often as we'd like. As this year's competition winds down, Organizers say they've spotted some talent and hopefully grown the sport further. If everything goes according to plan, Tanzanian fighters might one day achieve Olympic glory. Isaac Lukando, CGTN, Dar es Salaam. Now nestled below the prestigious University of KwaZulu-Natal on the outskirts of Durban, South Africa, lies the home of the Fantane Athletics Club. This avid group of runners, ranging in age, gather almost every day to train, learn and experience the sport that has changed their ways and given them a new lease on life. CGTNC is Duplessis with more. In 2012, Mdu Kamalo set about changing his lifestyle. Back then, the 41-year-old was overweight and took up running to get into shape. He then decided a year later, after shedding many kilograms, to start an athletics club with the objective of getting more people in his community to be active. The club uh, really means a lot to me. Um, the, the main reason uh, behind it uh, was trying to convey uh, a message to people, give them hope. Today, with over 70 members in his club ranging from as young as 7 to 50 years old, Mdu is spending most of his time developing talent at grassroots level. If you look at the ratio uh, mainly in, in, in most of the clubs, you will see that uh, the women, it may be one over four, you know. So if you look at the, the squad that is behind me right now, you will see that uh, it, it, it's mainly uh, young girls. I'm trying to bring them in this environment because it's not about bringing them here and train them. It's about being in the positive environment. Every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon, this field at the University of KwaZulu-Natal is a hive of activity as children of all ages gather to get their hour of coaching by the founder of the Pantane Athletics Club, Ndu Kamalo, who is producing elite athletes but is now more determined to develop talent at grassroots level with a dream of turning talented young athletes into future South African Olympians. If you look at uh, I mean, uh, this year's Olympics, we Muleri Matanga, one of my athletes, he, he missed by 17 seconds in the 5,000 to qualify for Olympics. But definitely uh, 2024, he's in the team. Uh, next year, he's going for World Half. Two of my athletes are, are, are already in a squad for World uh, Half, uh, which is taking place in March next year. So I've, I've, I've got a bigger picture and I've got big plans uh, for this club uh, in, the, in the near future. The Pantane Athletics Club founder is extremely proud of his athletes, from those just starting out to the elite runners who compete internationally on a regular basis. If I look back where I come from and, and look at it now, uh, to me it's like I've already achieved what I wanted to achieve within the club. So whatever that is happening now, to me it's like a bonus. Because when I started the club, I just wanted to bring hope to people, especially those who were like, their weight, you know, I wanted them to assist them, to encourage them that they can still change, you know. But now the, 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 the passion and love, it started to develop. Then I said to myself, you know what, I need to give back to my own community now. So that's what I'm doing here currently. 
but the future is bright for South Africa. Ndu Kamalo says he feels privileged to have been able to play his part in uplifting his community and to give those passionate about running an opportunity and space to experience the sport. His next goal is to expand his group of young runners and in doing so one day to realize a dream of cheering from the stands as one of his athletes competes at the biggest sporting event in the world, the Olympic Games. CS Duplessy, CGTN, Durban, South Africa. Well, we're taking another short break. Here's what's coming up. Annual Ram Wrestling Tournament takes Algeria by storm in a bleating fight for glory. Welcome back. Now, in Algeria, wrestling rams are a big attraction every year in a tournament that starts from the regional to the national level, held just before the important Eid ul Adha holiday. CGTN's Daniel Moy brings us more on this bleating story. Algerian cities change a few days before Eid al Adha, and the squares turn into ram wrestling arenas. Through local and national qualifiers, the winner of the title of Champion of Algeria is celebrated. In these tables, the Rams are bred from an early age to enter the world of wrestling, distinguishing them from the rest of the herd. We have been breeding them since their first year for these strong fights and taking care of them and all of their supplies. This fight started years ago in the Algerian capital, but were very popular in the eastern provinces of the country. They gather a large audience, but mostly take place in places away from the eyes of censorship. Some come out of curiosity and fun, and others are full betting. The prices of wrestling drums are rising dramatically, some of which exceed the value of two cars, and the price of Algeria's most expensive wrestling drum is $8,500. You pick it up from the start with wild characteristics and behaviors, but the process of maintenance and preparation is expensive and tiring, especially with the high prices, and then you train it bit by bit. From six months to about a year, he can struggle. Wrestling drums are tamed by keeping them alone for long months tied with an iron chain. A few days before his first duel, the breeder cuts his wool, dyes it, names it, and transforms it into a lion. I love this wrestling and it's my favorite hobby. I invest a lot in this hobby. I love the strong rams and the victory moments, which are a source of pride and dignity for the neighborhood and for the whole city. The ram market experiences great movement throughout the year and it peaks a few days before Eid al-Adar. An fencing ram can be purchased for 850 US dollars and up. It follows training for a year and more before his first round in the ring. The winner of this muscular fight is the Ram Tazon, who eliminated his opponent and deserved a moment of massage. Daniel Arab Moy, CGTN.
We round things off with football, where the Egyptian Premier League has voted to finally allow fans to attend local matches for the first time since 2012. The decision will be applied from Monday when the new season begins with 2,000 fans allowed, with hopes that the cap will be increased later. Here is CGTN's Adel Mahrui with more. The Egyptian Premier League kicks off October 25, bringing great news for fans. The newly formed Egyptian Clubs Association, which represents the nation's top competition, announced that fans will be permanently allowed in. This comes after Egyptian security bureaus have been banning football fans since 2012. <laughs> There are some regulations that will be in place for the fans. They must have an online profile on Tazkati to buy a ticket. COVID-19 measures will be applied, but they are the least I am worried about. The real test for the government and the Premier League will be the first match between Al-Ahli and Ismaili. If that match is played without the fans, rest assured the rest of the league will not have fans. The two clubs have a lot of fans. There could be tension. The ECA says it reached an agreement with the Interior Ministry to allow 12,000 fans per match. COVID-19 vaccination and distancing will be mandatory. All fans will also need to have a profile on Tascarti.com, the official online ticket sales body. While the digital platform immediately activates accounts for entertainment events, being able to buy a sports ticket, though, needs some background checks first. I'm very happy about the decision. For nearly 10 years, matches have been without fans, with exception of the African competitions. If CAF didn't insist on fans, even those matches would have been spiritless. I know it will be 1,000 for each team in a single match. They must be vaccinated. I feel great joy. It would have been better if they'd allowed more fans. 2,000 fans is very little. I'd wish they started with 5,000 for each team. Then when things go smoothly, we can then jump to 10,000 for each side. But as a start, it's fine. The Premier League has passed the ball to the fans. The behavior of the fans will determine what will happen next. Egyptian fans were banned from stadiums in 2012 after a deadly football riot saw 74 Al Ahli fans dead. In 2015, the authorities tried to allow fans back, but another football accident saw 22 dead, and fans were banned once again. For nine years, Egyptian football fans have been deprived from cheering for their clubs in domestic competitions. 2,000 fans are not many and they most probably won't have the power to strike excitement in stadiums. Yet it is a very crucial step forward for a big fan's dream to return to stadiums back in full. Adel Mahrui, CGTN, Cairo. And that's it for this week's edition of Sports Scene. Do remember you can send your feedback to the contacts on your screen and follow us on our digital media platforms. I'm Mahe Mutua from myself and everyone here. Thanks for watching. See you again same time next week.